Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in Western Canada. I hope that all of you are having a good week so far. Students in this class we are looking at IELTS task one writing and uh, yesterday I asked uh, what kind of a task one for the academic would everybody like to see it seemed that pie charts were the popular vote so I decided to do another uh, pie chart for everybody today and uh, the topic of this pie chart will be the ways that people go to work like with a bus or car or on foot so some statistics on that uh, welcome Sarah our chat moderator it's nice to see you in the class hi Carolina good to have you here uh, Romelia, Alexi, Chayani, nice to have all of you with me in the class. Uh, students, this is a class brought to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Visit us there. Uh, for the general IELTS, check us out at gieltshelp.com. General IELTS task one is different from the academic. Uh, very different, in fact. Um, the academic task one writing is an expository type essay. That means you have to expose, explain the graph. And uh, General IELTS Task 1 is a narrative essay. It means that you're the narrator or the uh, storyteller. And uh, these are completely different essay styles, expository versus narrative. So make sure that you're studying the right one for your IELTS exam. Uh, students, uh, the Academic IELTS website for Academic Type 1 um, essays looks like this for the homepage. Uh, I just uh, exited my student account there. Um, and uh, to join the premium package, click this big red button on the homepage that's just right above my head there, right there. It's a one time payment for lifetime access. So. Uh, it's well worth it. Uh, we're an IDP affiliate. We are a British Council partner. We're an IELTS Test Registration Center. So you are in excellent hands with us. We have helped hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of students succeed on their IELTS exams. You can see all of them on this page here, or many of them. Um, and uh, yeah, students, uh, again, uh, during checkout, just uh, use that code that I've been giving you all week long, READ9, for a 10% uh, discount on the premium IELTS package. Um, all right, uh, for general IELTS, for those of you who want to know some strategies, about uh, task one, letter writing, email writing. Um, the website looks like this. And again, you can just click that big red button there to join the premium version of the IELTS course. To get our apps, visit your app store, look for Academic IELTS Help general IELTS help download it install it link the app to the website under the more function so that you can learn from the same account Harpreet nice to see you in the class Silviana good to have you here I'm wondering Silviana did you get your exam results maybe not yet the official ones anyway Chen, welcome. We've got all of our moderators in here today. That's great. Oh, nice, Requeya. You applied for um, a remark inquiry of results, and it was successful. That's good, Requeya. All right, an EOR. If you're not happy with your marks, students in the IELTS, you can apply for an EOR, but do know that it costs money and uh, it's about 150 bucks US to get your test remarked and sometimes it changes your mark a lot of times it doesn't so Raquea it's good Raquea says I got a 6.5 instead of a 6 alright good 
Uh, students, um, Instagram for vocabulary, reels, schedules, IELTS underscore A help for academic, G IELTS help for general, and um, for emails, send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com, admin at aehelp.com. Uh, we will reply to your emails. There's no such a thing as a silly question, so send me an email. Any questions about IELTS? English, immigration, we will do our best to give you answers. Uh, for uh, getting hard copy books, you can do that through Amazon. Search for our titles, AE Helps Academic IELTS, GE Helps General IELTS. Students, the schedule, a little bit different this week. Um, so right now we've got task one, uh, followed by reading for subscribers. So definitely subscribing to the channel is a good idea. We've got a reading class coming up after this one and then uh, tomorrow we've got this uh, speaking uh, part two and uh, three for everybody uh, that will be starting at 14 o'clock UTC universal time or uh, GMAT time and we'll have a special guest for that class, a former examiner who was an IELTS uh, marker for the speaking and writing section for 10 years and worked with British Council on IELTS courses for five years. So lots of experience behind him. And uh, on the from 17th to the 20th, there's no class. And then I'm back on the 21st. I've actually put the schedule up on our YouTube community board. So you can see the schedule there. Another good reason to subscribe. All right, uh, we're working on an exciting new release for you as well with a real band nine IELTS speaking candidate. Um, but in the meantime, we've got this reading video that you should all see and check out. There you go. So have a look at that. All right, let's get into writing task one for the academic IELTS. Okay, this is for the academic uh, IELTS here. Artie decided to join us in our group of members. That's great, Artie. Welcome. Happy to have you on board. Make sure to send me an email so we can get you those exclusive videos. Okay, students. So um, IELTS writing task one. Uh, you have 20 minutes for this task. It's the first one in the writing. Definitely write task one first. It should be a little bit easier. It should kind of warm you up uh, for or get you ready for task two. Ah, there's Artie in the chat. Good to have you there. Okay, so uh, let's read it. Read it carefully. Okay, in the writing section, do not rush through the questions. It's not the reading section. You have to read these questions uh, carefully. So let's do it. We're going to read the question, look at the graph, uh, talk about strategy, and write a band nine essay for this question. That's the plan for this class. Uh, here we go, everybody. The graph shows various methods people used to get to work in an Asian city in two different time periods. Uh, report the main features and make comparisons where relevant. Okay, sure. So uh, the next step before we do any writing is to look at the graph. Okay, again, students just paraphrasing the question, so rewriting the question as your introduction is not enough for a high band score. You need to do more. You need to paraphrase and give details, okay? So, uh, for those of you who are a little bit new to the IELTS, IELTS Academic uh, Task 1 is an expository essay written in the third uh, person voice of the author. Okay, so no I, no you, no me. You should avoid we and us as well. Okay. So people, individuals, in this case commuters, drivers, pedestrians, we'll get to that in a bit. 
Um, so it's an expository essay. Don't give your opinion. Don't think. Don't say I believe people in this city don't like to drive. You don't know that. Okay. You don't know where this city is. You can only report what you see. All right. Um, this essay usually has three paragraphs. Okay. The introduction. The overview and the analyses, which is the body paragraph. It's the bigger one, okay? Um, introduction is, and that's what we're going to do right now. Is a paraphrase of the question with details from the graph. Okay, all right. So, uh, members, moderators, what should we include with the paraphrasing? So I'm going to paraphrase the question and then um, we will uh, include some details from the, um, from the chart. You know what, I'll just grab the question from here and put it down below so we can see it at the same time. So tell me what you think we should get from this uh, from this chart, okay? So here, I'm going to paraphrase. Uh, this uh, chart uh, illustrates, and you can paraphrase with me, okay? Several modes of transportation that commuters use to used to get to their jobs in some Asian city in two different years. Okay, so there's my paraphrase. It's more or less the exact same, just using different words, right? Using synonyms, paraphrasing. The simplest way is to use synonyms. So the graph shows various methods people use to get to work in an Asian city in two different time periods. Uh, this chart illustrates several modes of transportation that commuters use to get to their jobs in some Asian city in two different years. All right, so this sentence here equals this sentence here. But is it good enough for a band nine? No, until this point here, this introduction is just a band six. All I'm really doing is showing that I know other ways to say the same words, but I'm not showing thinking, okay? For band nine, especially in the academic, you have to keep in mind that you don't just show that you know English words. You have to show that you can think and um, work in English. Okay, so keep that in mind. For a band seven to nine, you must not only show that you uh, have good vocabulary and grammar, but you must also show the examiner that you have um, an ability to do work in English, okay? To think and calculate. All right, so what else should I be including from this pie chart in my introduction, okay? Romelia says the provided chart displays the transportation modes that individuals utilize to commute to work in an urban area of Asia during two different periods. Yeah, so Romelia, that would also be like a band six or 6.5. It's repeating the question, right? Um, Domenico says the chart illustrates the different modes of transportation that individuals employed to commute to their workplaces in Asian in an Asian city during two distinct time periods. Yes, almost Domenico, not Asian cities in an Asian city. It can only be one, right? Alexi says, include the biggest part. No, Alexi. That would be either your overview or more your analyses when you get there. 
Yanni says the given pie charts present the various transportations that people used to reach the workplace in 1959. It's, yeah, one year off. And 2009 in an Asian city, one Asian city. Okay, Bogdan, very good. Bogdan says, why don't we tell the reader what those years actually are? And why don't we tell those methods of transportation? You're right. And Fuang says the same thing. Like, let's um, let's do that, okay? There's something else that's included. Who's really paying attention to this graph and chart? Remember, when you look at a graph and chart, you read it just like a page of text on paper, okay? Left to right, top down, right? I've said this before a few times that uh, when you're looking at a chart you want to read left to right and top to down to bottom so if we're doing that then of course we're reading the years then we're looking at the charts and the legend okay that's called a legend and then we're looking at some additional information here that's provided at the bottom also right so we're going this way with the information just like uh, sentences on a page right well Lexi says look at that guys and girls they're giving us more here they're also giving us the average distance and the average duration of travel so there's a little bit more here that they decided to throw at us when you're going for that band seven to band nine, it is absolutely vital that you look at all the information that's uh, given to you uh, on the chart, okay? If you miss critical information like this, you're going to be in trouble. And it's a good idea to show the examiners that you see that, okay? All right, somebody sent us an email yesterday that said oh my teacher said that the examiners don't actually see the chart it's true when the examiners are marking your um, writing they're not actually looking at the chart so don't say the charts below okay because they're not looking at it uh, but they do know the chart they're familiar with it but they're not looking at it so don't refer to locations okay of information all right, um, so here, yeah, if I want to upgrade from a band six to a band nine, I definitely have to upgrade my writing. Zook, welcome. All right, good to have you on board. So let's upgrade um, our um, paraphrasing here Romelia you've got a good foundation Domenico you've got a good foundation so just type it again or copy it and then upgrade it so the two uh, whoop, let's do it on the bottom one um, these uh, two pi charts okay so instead of just saying this chart or these charts let's name them and let's tell the reader how many we're looking at these two pie chart illustrate instead of several modes okay <clears throat> instead of several modes tell the reader how many modes so again you're not just mimicking information you're thinking in english so here we can see that there are five modes Okay, we've got foot, bus, train, car, and other. And these are simple, they're short, they're quick. So you might as well let your examiner, in this case, know that you know what you're looking at. So seven modes. So these two pie charts illustrate seven modes of transportation. Foot, bus, train, car and other that commuters use to get to their jobs in some Asian city in and then instead of different years I would say 
in 1959 and 2009. Okay, now as I'm writing that, so as I'm writing 1959 and 2009, I realize that the time difference between these two time periods is, what is it? How can we say that? So when you have this 1959 to 2000, or, and then uh, 2009, right? Because it's not two, we don't see all the years between, okay? It is 50 years or five decades, yes, or natty, exactly half a century, mm -hmm. or anybody, some really clever analysis here, 50 years is also sometimes referred to as two generations later, a generation is roughly looked at as 25 to 30 years, okay? So 50 years, um, I mean, these days, a lot of people, especially in the West, are um, waiting a little bit longer to build their families, but generally speaking, um, it's about two generations. It's not one generation, Fuang. 50 years is roughly two generations. So two generations apart, okay? All right, so while you're writing, you're always thinking, you're always analyzing, and you should be seeing that as you're looking at this information. Now, you're not looking at any of the percentages just yet. That's going to be later on. That's the analysis, right? So, um, good. And then also, don't forget about that bottom piece, right? So, the average distance and the average duration. Okay. So uh, these two pie charts illustrate seven modes of transportation, foot, bus, train, uh, sorry, seven, five, somebody correct me. Uh, five modes of transportation, foot, bus, train, car, and other that commuters use to get to their jobs in some Asian city in two years, 1959 and 2009. Now, here I can say as well as the average distance and duration of travel, right? So that is that bottom piece, right? Now I have a band seven to nine introduction, okay? Now it has that level of detail that the examiner is looking for. Examiners aren't too impressed if you just paraphrase the question because a lot of students do that and a lot of students can do that. That's just modest English, okay? So to write good to expert, you have to look at the graph, use those extra pieces of information. Everybody clear? Everybody good? Okay. Everybody's good about that? RT, I don't see your introduction. I'm not sure if you wrote that before you became a member or what, but I don't see it. So if you've got an introduction, already uh, put it in there. Okay. All right. Everybody's giving me thumbs up. Yeah. Um, now, already saying 1959 to 2009. So is that correct, everybody? If I write this, and I wanted to actually show this already, so I'm glad you put that in there. So if I write here, um, in some Asian city in two years, 1959 and 2009, if I write um, dot, 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 uh, that commuters used to get to their jobs in uh, some Asian city in two um, Asian city from 1959, to 2009, is this correct? This uh, way to finish the sentence, okay? This is a very important point 
for many people. So Raquea says no, Chayani says no, Nadi says no. Why is it not? Okay, so why can I not use this 1959 uh, to 2009? Yeah, Dylan, exactly. It's not the time period. So we do not see all of the data for the years uh, between 1959 to 2009. It is the most common first mistake for IELTS candidates for the academic IELTS in task one with pie charts, okay? Is this mistake right here. They write it like it's a line graph. This is not a line graph. You do not see the years between the two pies, okay? Okay, you cannot state continuity. So be very careful about that, Artie. It's the most common mistake. I see probably two out of every three academic IELTS candidates make this mistake. Um, and immediately the examiner's like, well, oh, it's not a band nine anymore, that's for sure. Okay, and then uh, of course many people continue writing as if it's a line graph. We can see the change from to 1959. It, gradually increased and it's like well what do you see a gradual increase you have no idea or gradually decreased right you have no idea about that right so that would be statistically very inaccurate so for example just to emphasize this we can see here that uh, foot commuters were more than half here 55 percent by 2009 it was a quarter right 25 percent on foot and some um, IELTS candidates will say that um, it rapidly decreased from 1959 to 2009. We have no idea. We have no idea about that decrease. It could have been like this on a line graph. It could have been uh, um, fluctuating. So we don't know, okay? So be careful about that. It's a pie chart, not a line graph. They're not the same. They're not the same, okay? Again, students, if you're confused about what is a line graph, what is a pie chart, what is a table, uh, go to your web account, log into your My Student account, click on your online course, click on Writing Section uh, Task 1 Part 1, and then uh, jump to your uh, different types of Task 1 and the reason for uh, those, right? So you will learn very quickly here that uh, line graphs are used to illustrate correlations between variables and to show change on these scales, okay? As where pie charts are used to show percentages of a whole within one time period, all right? So, Line charts, bar graphs, pie charts are not the same, okay? There's differences between them and you cannot write the same about them. A lot of IELTS classes and IELTS teachers teach the students to write for line graphs and then everybody writes as like, like as if they're looking at a line graph for every question, which is not good. Okay, it's not good. So um, check out your course uh, and uh, make sure to go through those slides, if, especially if you didn't study this in school, okay? Uh, you will need it for university as well, so use that big red button and make that one-time payment to sign up for the premium course. It's worth it. Uh, all right, uh, so back to the point here with the line graph. Um, the next step, once I have this, um, this introduction, is to write the overview, right? What is the overview? Okay, so after you write the introduction, you write the overview. Okay. All right. While you tell me that overview, let's give Artie a hand here. Artie's got the introduction here. Artie says, the pie charts, 
Think about your overview, everybody. Artie, think about your overview. Um, Artie, it's the two uh, pie charts depict um, information about an Asian uh, city. Didn't say urban, it just said Asian city. Where uh, travelers, it would be commuters. went uh, to their workplace with five various kinds of transportation modes, car, bus, train, uh, foot, and other. We don't use et cetera in our writing, it's useless. In 1959 and 2009, okay, so I upgraded you're writing from a band five to a band eight. There were quite a few corrections there. So if I have five, six corrections in one sentence like that, it's definitely closer to the band five. So be careful with that, okay? All right. Romalia has an overview for us. Let's check out Romalia's overview and we'll go from that, okay? So the overview, everybody, are the main features. The, the, the questions ask you for that. The question literally has, like, give me an overview in there. Um, so when you look at the task two question and it says here, report the main features, that's basically the part that says, what's the overview? So give an overview, right? So report the main features, that's what it is. All right, you're very welcome, Artie. Keep writing, it's the way we learn. Okay, um, so report the main features. Yes, so main features you should recognize, you should realize just by taking a glance at the pie charts. That's why a lot of the overviews start with at a glance or at first glance, okay? All right, um, what do we see at first glance? What do we see, right? Well, let's see what Romalia had for us and then we'll see if we all agree with Romalia's first glance, okay? Um, so this is Romalia's overview here, I'm guessing. Correct me if I'm wrong, Romalia. Okay. Uh, so Romalia says, in the first time period, walking was the most prevalent method of commuting, pedestrians accounting for nearly 60% of all journeys to work. Romalia, too much detail, okay? Um, in the overview, do not provide percentages and don't just look at most and least, okay? So uh, for a band nine uh, overview, look beyond most and least. A lot of students go the most and the least and yes, it's okay, but you want more than that. If you're going to be a band nine, you have to show that you can go above and beyond the average, okay? So for a band nine overview, look beyond most and least and uh, f do not go into details yet. Uh, save that for the analyses, okay? So Romalia, I would go a little bit of a different direction, okay? Natty says, in 1959, the average distance and the average duration were shorter than in 2009, as well as the ways of transportation. Very good, so Natty, you're a little bit closer. You're a little bit more on the right track. No, it's all good, Romelia. that's why we're here. We're here to learn. Um, Chani says, in general, walking dominated the chart in 1959 while the car was the biggest percentage after five decades. So what you're telling me, Chayani, is that the mode of transportation uh, changed. Um, over the course of the half century. So the dominant forms of transportation changed. Right, um, and we don't even need to necessarily mention what they were. So we can see here that we've got a big slice here in uh, 1959. That slice becomes a lot smaller here. And then we've got a small slice here, which becomes a lot bigger here. We've got another small slice here, which definitely becomes significantly bigger here. And then we've got the, um, the, 
green and the red slice here, which kind of stay the same, right? And then we have this piece here at the bottom, the average distance and duration, which Natty cleverly realized, wow, that changes a lot too, right? So now that I've given you that information, you should be able to put together a better overview that's going to be much more effective for a high band score, right? I'm going to do the same, and then we will discuss. The overview is very important because it's the thesis, it's the outline for your analyses, okay? So let me show you what I'm going to do here with the overview, okay? Upon initial observation, because that's what I did. I didn't just take a glance here. I actually did a bit of observing, right? So it's my initial observation, okay? Upon initial observation, over the course of this half century, certain forms of commute um, changed dramatically while two remained the same. In relation, the average distance and time required to get to work also increased significantly. Okay, so there is my overview. And now, if you can't do it in one sentence, because this I realize this is quite a complex sentence and I'm using quite a range of vocabulary here, but if you can't do it in one sentence like this, it's fine, you can do it in two sentences. You can use simpler vocabulary. What's most important is that you deliver this information, okay? All right, so upon initial observation over the course of this half century, certain forms of commute changed dramatically while two remain the same. In relation to the average distance and time required to get to work, in relation, the average distance and time required to get to work also increased significantly. Okay, the in relation, you notice that I'm using this semicolon and this comma, it's very important. It's basically saying in connection to the concept of changing modes of transportation, right? Okay, so is everybody clear on this overview and why I'm writing this overview? So notice that I'm not just writing most and least, but I'm more interested in the changes that are happening. Because yes, I agree that, you know, we can see this big uh, change here with foot traffic. But if I focus on that, then I might lose the attention on the uh, car traffic, which is also quite drastic or dramatic, right? So instead of just mentioning one or the other, what I decide to do is just tell the reader that there are a couple of uh, dramatic changes. There, give you a smiley face, okay? Um, with a mask. <laughs> All right, so is that clear? Okay, and you have 20 minutes. It is enough time. As long as you practice at home and you pay attention and you're thinking critically, you can do this. You can recognize that, oh yeah, okay, there's quite a bit of movement here with these three. And then with these three, they're kind of, or these two, they're kind of the same. So let's discuss that in a logical pattern. We can see that there's quite a bit of difference here and here. So let's discuss that in a logical pattern, right? Mal says that's clear. 
Raquel says, overall, the highest mode of transportation in 1959 was foot. However, in 2009, it changed by car. Additionally, average distance and duration rose up over the five decades. So Raquel, again, that's the simpler overview, right? So your overview is already targeting the specific changes. And because of that, it's missing certain elements. So for example, it's missing that the other modes of transportation, maybe like e-bikes or e-scooters, um, they also changed a lot, right? So the other modes of transportation more, more than doubled uh, in those years. So obviously some other forms of transportation likely appeared, okay? All right, so Rakwe, it's okay. It's about a band six to seven, but it's losing a little bit of the overall, right? So your overview, if you think about it this way, your perfect overview should not miss any part of the chart. So Rakwe, if you're looking at your overview, the reason it's not a band eight or nine is because it's missing certain parts of these pie charts, like it's missing the train and the bus, which didn't change. It's missing the other, which changed quite a bit, okay? So if your overview misses elements of the graphs, tables, charts, then it's not a great overview. It's an okay overview at best, okay? All right, Fuang writes, at first glance at the graphs reveal that going to work by foot and car dominated in two different years while these seemingly different in low proportion in some points. Um, so Fuang, same thing. There's just some awkward language there. It's too specific. It's not concise enough. Um, so you want to, you know, take it a little bit, a little bit easier, a little bit uh, less focused. Okay. Notice how in my overview, I don't even mention what form of transportation changed how. Why? Because I can do that in the analysis, right? So notice how I don't mention any bus or train or car or anything like that in my overview. I just say, upon initial observation over the course of this half century, certain forms of commute changed dramatically while two remain the same in a relation to the average distance and time required to get to work also uh, increased significantly, right? And then now for the analysis, I'm going to get into those details and then I'm not repeating myself, right? Okay, so the analyses is where you follow the pattern of your overview and give lots of detail, okay? So again, your overview is simply the uh, main features in a logical pattern that identify the most observable points on the graphs, okay? Not too much detail, so no need for details in the overview. Okay, it's the analyses where you do that, okay? So here, it's important that you follow the structure of your overview. Following the structure of your overview. Identify the key points for comparison and give good detail with strong connections, okay? So here we can see that uh, point number one should be foot, right? Point number two should be car. Uh, point number three in this case for me will be other because that also changed quite a bit, okay? And then point number four will be uh, trains and buses. I'm going to combine those. I'm not going to do that as a point four five because that didn't change all that much. So that will be my point four. Okay, then my point five will be the uh, change in uh, the average distance and duration. OK, 
Okay, so step by step. Okay, um, let's do that. So let's write the sentence for foot. So on f going to work on foot. Okay, let's write that sentence first. Okay, so here, let me kind of start you off and um, write your own version. You don't have to pay attention to me. So here we go, the analyses in greater detail. Okay, it's a nice way to start that because that's really what I'm doing. I'm taking my overview and I'm going into more detail. So notice here I'm saying at the in the overview, I said that um, certain forms of commute changed dramatically. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the most dramatic change first, right? Okay, in greater detail, foot traffic made up more than half the population in 1959. However, by 2009, it dropped to just a quarter. Which means it changed from the most to the second most popular way to commute, right? So, uh, in greater detail, foot traffic made up more than half the population, right? And it's more than half, it's 5% more. So, I don't just say 55%, and I don't just say 25%, but I actually use words, right? So, in greater detail, foot traffic made up more than half the population in 1959. However, by 2009, it dropped to just a quarter, uh, falling from um, first to second place in popularity. Okay? Because that's what it did. It was the most popular, and it became the second most popular. So, it fell from first to second place in popularity. Notice that interesting phrase, okay? All right, and it's continuous because it happened continuously over that period at some point. We don't know how fast or how slow or fluctuating, but it fell from first to second, okay? All right, so far so good, so that's point one. All right. Uh, Domenico writes, overall, the method of transportation, such as walking, was more prevalent in 1959, but gradually decreased. Um, Domenico, you don't know that if it gradually decreased. It might have decreased suddenly. So, Domenico, be very careful. This is what I mean. It's not a line graph. So, Domenico, if this were a line graph and it looked like this, and the year 1959 was here, or we're here, and this was 2009, okay? Um, we don't know if walking changed like this in popularity. It gradually went from 50% to a quarter, okay? Or maybe it went like this, Domenico. We don't know that. We don't have the line graph to show it. So maybe it went like this. Okay? We have no idea. So you can't tell your reader that because it's misinformation. And boy, are we not happy with all the misinformation in the world today. So we have to have integrity. We have to be careful with data, right? We can't have misinformation. Right? It's very dangerous, especially in academia. Right? We get enough of that in politics. Um, so, so careful with that. Okay. Raquea says, in greater detail, commuters who traveled by foot was 55%. However, it decreased dramatically to 25%. Yeah, and you know, Raquea, using percentages sometimes is okay. You don't have to never use percentages, right? So it's fine. Um, Bogdan says, in 1959, most people preferred commuting to work on foot. Um, <laughs> you know, 
Yeah, okay, at 55%. However, this proportion decreased dramatically to one quarter in 2009, becoming the second most popular method. Yeah, um, and I would, instead of becoming the second most popular method, Bogdan, I would say uh, falling to the second most. So we know that it, it fell to the second most. Okay, good. Fantastic. So um, now I'm going to look at um, cars, right? So car uh, commuters, okay, motorists. We can also call them motorists. What would be a good way? So we can see that here in 1959, motorists make up 10%. And here, motorists make up 35%. Okay. Uh, what would be a good way to join my sentences here? In greater detail, so here's my first one with the foot traffic. In greater detail, foot traffic made up more than half the population in 1959. However, by 2009, it dropped to just a quarter, falling from first to second place in popularity. Um, what word should I use here to start my sentence for vehicle traffic? Alexi says, cars, on the other hand. Bogdan says, in contrast. Mm hmm. Yeah, those are good. Any more? So you're realizing that it's an opposite here, right? So while foot traffic decreased in popularity, cars increased. Yeah, Fuang, I would probably use conversely. You know me all too well, you know my diction. I would say conversely. Vehicle traffic, right? Instead of cars, vehicle traffic is a nice way. If I said foot traffic and now I say vehicle traffic, this is called nice English when you're doing foot traffic and then here I'm doing vehicle traffic, okay? So conversely, foot traffic gained a lot of popularity Okay. So foot traffic gained a lot of uh, popularity. From what time to what time? Okay. How would you actually say 1959? If we really want to impress the examiner, as a lot of IELTS YouTubers like to say, if we really want to impress the examiner, what would we, what could we refer to as 1959? 1959 is what part of history? Natty, you're on the right track. It's 20th century. What part of the 20th century? So be a little bit more specific, Natty, but you're, you're on the right track. Okay. Natty has it the closest, but it's just a little bit off. I'd like to see a little bit more English there, a little bit more specific, Natty. Fuang mid is the word I'm looking for, just not mid 90s, because it's not mid 90s, right? It's the mid 20th century. Yes, Suk, exactly. Middle, just watch your spelling, okay? So it's the mid 20th century, and this is the, what's this? It's not the 60s. Thank you, Carolina. Yes, it's mid 20th century. Very good. Okay. Um, that's right. Carolina's got the right answer there, everybody. Mid 20th century, and this is early, not early 20, Raquea. It's the early 21st century is okay, or beginning of the millennium, yes, Natty, that's a nice way to say it, or beginning of the 21st century, right? Start of the 21st century. So again, use that good English, right, to impress the examiner. That's what they're looking for when they're looking for band eight, band nine. So conversely, vehicle traffic gained a lot of popularity at the um, or from gained a lot of popularity
in uh, or at the or in the sorry in the mid twentieth. Uh, Century, it accounted for uh, one tenth of commuters, but by the start of the twenty first century, it tripled to over a third of the population, okay? So here we go. Conversely, vehicle traffic gained a lot of popularity and then comma, I'm using the comma here as a definitive clause. So it means that this phrase defines this concept of popularity, okay? So conversely, vehicle traffic gained a lot of popularity. In the mid 20th century, it accounted for one tenth of commuters. Accounted for means made up, or that was the total number, okay? And we can see that because here, you notice that it's 10%, right? Here it's 35%, so it's times three, which is triple, okay? And again, when you practice this, you can do this quickly. All right, so, uh, but by the start of the 21st century, which is 2009, it tripled to over a third of the population, okay? Band seven, band eight, band nine, the IELTS examiners are looking for interpretation of data, not just simple reporting of data, but interpretation of data, okay? Everybody got that? In the first decade of the 21st century, Souk, 21st, not 21st, 21st, ST, um, it's a little bit too much detail, Souk, so you don't need to go into that much detail. Carolina's like, I got it. Awesome, Carolina. Um, so in greater detail, foot traffic made up more than half the population in 1959. However, by 2009, it dropped to just a quarter, falling from first to second place in popularity. Conversely, vehicle traffic gained a lot of popularity in the mid 20th century. It accounted for one tenth of commuters, but by the start of the 21st century, it tripled to over a third of the population, making it the most popular method of getting to the job, right? So here we can show the reader that, okay, Foot traffic fell to second place and vehicle traffic became number one, okay? Now, um, here with my third point, which is other, remember I said other also shows change here, more than doubling. I'm going to keep it simple. So notice how my sentences, my thinking, I spent a bit more time with foot traffic and vehicle traffic because they're very important for this sample size of this data. But other, even though there's a significant change, it doesn't make up a lot of the pie, so I'm not going to use a lot of my brain power and time uh, for that. Um, it's similar to cars, it's increasing, right? So similarly, Okay, so that's my joining word here. Similarly, other modes of transportation also doubled proportionally because we don't know the numbers here, right? The city could have gone from two million people to four million people, so we don't know the numbers. So it's all proportions or percentages, right? So similarly, other modes of transportation also uh, doubled uh, over the course of five decades uh, from 5% uh, to 12%. Uh, uh, and if you say also doubled, it's fine. You can say more than doubled. 
um, especially when you give the percentages, it's okay. Either way is fine. So similarly, other modes of transportation also more than doubled over the course of the five decades, comma, definitive clause from five to 12%, the from five to 12, from, the, the, the from five to 12 percent defines the more than doubled. Okay. Alexi writes, vehicles, on the other hand, have got popular um, among citizens of the city and the percentage of using has decreased approximately three times and became the main met or increased approximately uh, in three times and became the main method of commuting. Alexi, a little bit of grammatical correction is needed there. Okay. All right. Good. Now I will use on the other hand, right? Because on the other hand, I can join the uh, bus train, right? There's not really a lot of change there. So buses lose a couple percent, a couple points, but <coughs> really we're just not really changing much here, right? So buses and trains together make up about one third, right? So if we add those two up, it's about 30%. So what is that? It's like a, it's a little less than a third, right? So the proportion of buses and trains, right? Okay, so here, all we do is for the next point, on the other hand, and it's not a new paragraph, it's just one, we're looking at commuters in two years, so we don't have a different graph or a table, we're not looking at a bar graph suddenly, we're not looking at, um, uh, people's breakfast before they go to work. So it's not a different topic here. We don't need a different paragraph. So simply on the other hand, the proportion or the proportions of bus and uh, train passengers remained relatively the same around 15% uh, each making up uh, just under a third of the total uh, sample size in both years. Okay, so let me explain that sentence to you uh, in greater clarity, okay? so. On the other hand is joining because it's opposite to all of this information that I've just given to the examiner, right? So, or the reader, I'm telling them of the changes that are happening. So foot traffic, uh, car traffic, other traffic, big changes, right? On the other hand, slight or no changes, right? The proportions, uh, proportions are countable, okay? So proportion is the ratio or the percentage, it's not the number, right? So here we're looking at the proportion, it's the chunk here, right? Stays relatively the same. I'm not going to concern myself with the 2% change in bus um, traffic, right? It's, it's, it's relatively insignificant in the bigger picture of this graph, okay? So uh, on the other hand, the proportions of bus and train passengers remained relatively the same, around 15% each, with that one exception of one, but we don't need to talk about that. It's too much detail. Uh, making up just under a third of the total sample size in both years, okay? Right, that makes sense so far? Everybody's good? I haven't lost uh, anybody yet in the... Okay, and notice again, uh, everybody, viewers, members, that um, my analyses are following my overview. So my overview, first I talked about the forms that changed dramatically. Now I'm talking about the two that remain the same. Okay, that's my, those were the bus and the, um, the train, right? Everybody following with me? Yes? 
Okay, Alexi says, yeah, it makes sense. Am I done? Okay. All right. Am I done yet? Fuang says, include some kind of a summary or something interesting here. You're right, Fuang, but even before that, <clears throat> there's no body paragraph to Chayani. I don't need it. It's all just one big body paragraph here. Okay, already says it's clear. Okay, I'm not done yet. Um, how do I know I'm not done? Well, because if I look at my overview, right, then I have more information. It's like uh, you should always complete your thesis, right? So if my overview is my thesis, notice how here I have the average distance and time required to get to work also increase significantly. So that's a third point, right? So that should be discussed in the body paragraph next, right? Exactly, Fuang, the average distance and time. Okay. So here, the average distance is 3.5, and here the average distance is 19. What's the difference between 3.5 kilometers and 19 kilometers? So how would you logically say that? Yeah, so Alexi says, hey, pay attention. Average information for sure. So what's the what's the difference here? Let's be some clever students. Okay. Uh, Suk, so you've got a lot of grammatical and language use mistakes in that sentence there. So you need to rewrite that, okay? So it's easier to comprehend. Uh, don't try to be really fancy. Try to state it in a simple way. Okay, Romelia says it's six times. I would go five times, Romelia. <laughs> six times, you're over, you're over gauging it. Six times would be 21 kilometers, right? So three plus 18, 21. Um, five would be under, under a little bit. It would be 17.5, um, a little more than five times, right? I would say. Yeah, a little more than five times. Okay. So that's significant, right? So I would definitely describe that as five times. Okay. Notably, let's do it, right? So notably, the distance, the average distance. Uh, what's another way to say average, by the way, uh, students? There are different ways to say it in, uh, in English. If you're thinking statistics, um, there's a very common word that's used in statistics for the word average. Anybody know what that is? Yeah, Domenico, very good. It's the mean. The mean distance um, from home to work increased by more than uh, five fold. Instead of five times, you can use the word fold. By more than five fold uh, from 3.5 to 19 kilometers. Okay, and don't write the word kilometers, use abbreviations where you can, okay. Oh, one word, never knew, um, five fold. One word, look at that. You learn something new every day. I knew, I did not know that that was one word in English. Five fold, five fold. Okay, um, so notably, the mean distance from home to work increased by more than five fold from 3.5 to 19 kilometers. And the time required uh, 17 to 42. How much is that? Everybody quick math. So IELTS in the listening, in the reading, in the writing, there are places where you might have to use a little bit of quick math. Yeah, Fuang, very good, tripled. Um, more than tripled, not almost tripled, Natty. Um, just over, right? Three times 17 is uh, 41, okay? Or no, sorry, uh, 
30, that's 51. So less than tripled, right? So three times 10, 30, three times seven, 21, that would be 51, okay? So more than doubled, more than doubled, everybody, more than doubled, not tripled, right? Where's, we're, we're, all, we're all in English, we're not in math class. <laughs> Alexi says, my math skills are awful. It shouldn't be that awful though. <laughs> Carolina says, yes, less than tripled. Simple math, right? We're only working with double digits here, everybody. Our math teachers are crying right now. Um, so <laughs> slightly more than doubled, right? So two times uh, 17 is uh, 34, okay? <laughs> Uh, so more than doubled, okay? And the time required, uh, <laughs> more than doubled, okay? So what can we infer? In summary, it can be inferred. Now, inferred is not a guess. It's not an opinion. It's an educated observation based on information. So based on all of this information, and here we're going for that absolute band nine, everybody. So here, based on this observation of changing foot traffic to car traffic, changing average distances uh, to uh, the average durations, what can we infer? What can we infer? Alexi, no, you cannot bring a calculator <laughs> with you to the test. And I'm pretty sure the examiners would be disappointed if you were trying to <laughs> type in 42 divided by 17 into your calculator. Okay. So what can we infer? All right. We're not we're not five year olds doing math or six year olds, right? We, as adults, uh, seventeen and forty two. All right, what can we infer? Raquea, nice reflection of the uh, last sentence there. Well, we can infer that greater distances demanded faster modes of transportation, right? So I mean, it makes sense that when your work is three point five kilometers people are likely walking to work a lot more. When the average distance of work is 19 kilometers, then people are going to be driving more often, right? So that's what we can infer. Again, it's not an opinion, it's an inference, okay? So um, in summary, it can be inferred that with greater distances, uh, to the workplace at the turn of the millennium, faster modes of transportation, such as cars, became more popular to reduce travel time and effort. Okay, now that's not an opinion. That we can actually infer from the data, right? So we can see that the distance changes quite a bit. So it makes sense that it's likely a big cause of this shift in the amount of people driving cars, right? Okay, all one sentence. And so take a look at the full essay, okay? And you'll see it makes sense. It's band nine, okay? Here we go. So. Uh, here's the original question again. All right. The graph shows various methods people use to get to work in an Asian city in two different time periods. Report the main features and make comparisons where relevant. These two pie charts illustrate five modes of transportation, foot, bus, train, car, and other that commuters use to get to their jobs in some Asian city in two years, 1959 and 2009, as well as the, I don't even need that two years, in 1959 and 2009, as well as the average distance and duration of travel. Upon initial observation over the course of this half century, 
certain forms of commute changed dramatically while two remained the same. In relation, the average distance and time required to get to work also increased significantly. In greater detail, foot traffic made up more than half the population in 1959. However, by 2009, it dropped to just a quarter, falling from first to second place in popularity. Conversely, vehicle traffic gained a lot of popularity. In the mid 20th century, it accounted for one tenth of commuters. But by the start of the 21st century, it tripled to over a third of the population, making it the most popular method of getting to the job. Similarly, other modes of transportation also more than doubled over the course of five decades, from 5 to 12%. On the other hand, the proportions of bus and train passengers remained relatively the same, around 15% each, making up just under a third of the total sample size in both years. Notably, the mean distance from home to work increased by more than fivefold from 3.5 to 19 kilometers, and the time required more than doubled. In summary, it can be inferred that with greater distance to the workplace at the turn of the millennium, faster modes of transportation, such as cars, became more popular to reduce travel time and effort. Okay? Does that make sense? The flow, the connection, the funnel, right? It's a funnel. So introduction gives an idea. Overview gives the approach. Analysis gives the details. It's like a funnel that you boil, boil, boil down to create interpretation and clarity. So you're not just reporting again, but you're interpreting for a band nine. Okay. Everybody is clear on that. There's no other parts. It's just these three parts. Okay. So your goal is to put your reader in a funnel of clarity from giving an idea to interpreting the information in a logical pattern. Okay? All right. Fong says, yes, it does. Chen says, bravo. All right, so that's what you want to practice, students. And again, uh, keep in mind that on the websites, you have a lot of uh, places to practice this. So make sure to join our premium IELTS package by clicking that big uh, red button there. And uh, you're good, you're off to the races. Okay, so for general IELTS, make sure you're practicing general IELTS. Uh, task one and to see those videos and those lessons um, again just sign up for our premium IELTS package here by clicking this big red button okay you can send us your task one task two essays to get a free band score estimate all you have to do is send your task one task two essay to either of these emails and we will give you a free estimate of your band score based on your writing okay we do that for free members thank you very much new members already thank you for joining thank you members for jumping in and uh, having some fun with me i hope you stay here for the next class we've got uh, reading coming up after this class um, and that'll be kind of a fun reading topic for everybody some cultural learning uh, so again um, aehelp.com for academic IELTS uh, gieltshelp.com for general thank you for all of our moderators who are here today Chen Carolina Sarah I'm not sure if Sarah is still here with us but uh, it was great to have all the moderators in the class that was fantastic and I hope to see you back here in 30 minutes or so a little bit more uh, for uh, reading reading so Come back, join me for that. I'm Adrian, I'm signing out from Victoria and uh, I will be back in half an hour. Bye for now, everybody.